A lot of people get to dump climate-damaging greenhouse gases into the Earth's atmosphere for free. Carbon pricing is one way to make them pay for it. Cap-and-trade is a market-based way to do that. In the U.S., cap-and-trade was first used successfully in the 1990s under former President George H.W. Bush to reduce sulfur dioxide, which causes acid rain. First comes the cap part. The government sets a firm overall limit on emissions. This limit is set to ratchet down over time in order to address environmental goals like combating climate change. Companies then receive allowances from the government to pollute a certain amount. But they also get some flexibility. That's where the trade part comes in. If they emit less, they can sell those allowances to other companies. If they emit more, they have to buy allowances. If a polluter isn't in compliance, it can be subject to fines or other penalties. Across the globe, in an effort to combat climate change, more than 40 governments have put some sort of price on carbon, either by directly taxing fossil fuels, implementing cap-and-trade systems, or doing both. In the U.S., cap-and-trade systems are in place in California and the Northeast.